I thought I would show everybody our teaching classroom. So we call this our molecular biology teaching classroom. I have genetics in here. We teach our phage biology class in here. And sometimes my cell biology class is in here. However, now we've moved to our cancer research tissue culture classroom that we're starting to create. Um, as you can see, I have three large benches. Each bench will hold four teams of students. Sometimes students work in groups of two, sometimes students work groups of three, depending on my, on my mood and the size of the classroom and what we have. Each bench is set up where students have all the material that they need to do a traditional molecular biology lab, all the pipettes, all the tips. Everything is numbered, and the way it's set up is that you essentially can only use the number of, that you're assigned. So this is tabletop one, so students can only use the racks and tips assigned to tabletop one. I have a few four degree ultra colds. I also point out that we have markings to tell the students what antibiotic resistance we're using. We use a color code system because we make so many plates. This is so much easier. Nice minus 80 that's having issues and flashing here. The other thing I'd like to point out is that since we have so many students, we've gone to this color code system. And so at the columns of every bench is a color code. And so if you come in on Tuesday, the Tuesday lab who sits at this bench, they're assigned the purple color code. In this situation, the Wednesday lab, because I run two labs, assigned the pink color code. And the way this works is that I buy bulk material. I really like these plasma pure um, Zymo kits for isolating plasmids. I buy them in bulk. They're relatively cheap when you buy them in bulk. And then I break them down into smaller subunits, put them in a box marked with the purple. So if you're the purple lab bench day, your group can only have and use purple material. I do the same thing with my enzymes. I buy all our synthetic bi biology enzymes in bulk. I buy them, break them up into smaller amounts, label them with my Dymo printer, and in smaller aliquots, and I put them in a box. Once again, each box has a purple label. Students are also given a storage box where they can store all their plasmids and parts and different things they've collected and made throughout the semester. And these are also stored with a purple label. And the way this works is essentially everybody at the table on Tuesday is using purple labeled material. And so I'm very big on working as a sense of community and sense of of ownership of having these materials and so now everybody's responsible to make sure our materials that are marked with purple are used correctly if they run out you have to tell others because that is your group who will run out of the material you cannot go and get material from a different box I also have students put purple labels on their notebook so I know if you come in on a different day and you have a purple notebook you should have the purple material if what this does is students are very more, are much more likely to police themselves and watch each other and help each other. I don't really want them to police and get after them, each other, but what I want them to do is to help. And so if you can't use a pipette, you need to ask somebody next to you for some help and advice because you don't want to contaminate those enzymes that somebody else may use. And vice versa, if you see someone having problems, you want to help them because they're going to be the ones using your enzymes or your kit reagents for a plasma isolation later on. And so it, it's to your advantage to make sure they are doing it right. I really want them to work together and learn to interact with each other with all these types of stuff. Underneath each bench, I have five gallon buckets with autoclave bags so students can put stuff in there. And when they begin to get full, my student workers take those and dispose of them. If you keep walking around the lab, you can see all my other boxes that we've created with all the colors that match everything for the different lab groups. Here's my UV Viz. My UV Viz is about my only real dangerous thing that we still use in the lab for all intent purposes. I no longer use Ethidium bromide. We use gel green. However, I get really good pictures with my UV Viz and I just haven't had time to buy a blue transluminator. But I'd have this shroud that used to have a Polaroid camera attached on top of it. It's a good safe protection for the students. Students open the lid here, put the gels in, they can take pictures. They open this up right here is where the UV 
that's where the Polaroid camera used to be and now they can set their camera right there on top of it without looking down into it and take some pretty nice gel images. Here's my Dymo printer. As I said, you can buy more specific lab printing material from Fisher and other companies, but I found that these little labels from LabJet are relatively cheap. I bought a $75 Dymo printer and students print out their plasma information, automatically puts a date on it, and now I can read my materials. What was happening, we were handwriting everything we just could not keep up, and I couldn't read people's initials. So now we have a very specific nomenclature that we give our students. They have to record it in a certain pattern and order, and it's easy to do because all they're doing is typing it, hit print, and it prints out. And so I buy it from this company right here. One of the things that I really like about my lab that I've that changed how we do things is my NanoDrop. Our NanoDrop allows us to very quickly and easily determine DNA concentration, DNA quality. We, we can do this using a gel rig, and we used to do this quite a bit just using a gel rig. However, this has really sped up what we do. I do have a gel documentation system, but I have to admit it has not been turned on in about five years. It's just easier to use my transluminator. It Pictures are quality is better. Everything is better. Students have a refrigerator that they are allowed to use. If I open up this refrigerator, you can see all the other kits that the students have labeled with their times and their colors. In the refrigerator down below it, we also have students storing their plates. You can see that I also have boxes with colors. Only things that are stored in boxes are kept. You may see some plates down here, but these are the class plates. They'll eventually get moved into a class box but because of COVID-19, we kind of stopped and I did not move them into the box. But if your team puts your plates anywhere other than in your box, I throw them away. And so this is a good way to keep them organized. If their box gets full, students then have to decide what they're gonna keep and what they're gonna throw away. I also have a research minus 20 and students are told to keep their hands off and stay away from it. So this is where I keep our bulk material and if we need it, I go and get it from it. Everywhere in the lab I have posted our color codes for our antibiotic plates. And so we pour lots of plates and what we do is we just put a blue, red, green, black stripe on the plates and students have to look at the colors and determine what color goes with what antibiotics. Because remember, when you're doing 3A assembly, there's gonna be lots of different antibiotics rolling around in the lab depending on what they're doing. I have a 37 degree incubator, nothing fancy or special. I have a heat block. I like having a dual heat block system because we will do digestions at one temperature, but we also have to do heat and activation at another temperature. And what I used to do is have one heat block that had them both together. Students were always getting those confused and they would end up denaturing their enzyme at the wrong time using the wrong temperatures. And so I just broke down, bought a second heat block that way we can make sure everything is better. I have a shaking 37 degree incubator. This is very important for growing plasma. Students can open it up, they can get into it. Once again, I have a label system so students can see what they're using. Next to my incubator, I have all the broths that they may use. I also have terrific broth and SOC broth that students can use for their transformations. When sterile have, students have to take sterile cultures, we have a couple different things. I have wood state sticks that are put inside tin foil and autoclaved. There's one or two sticks in here. Students can pull them out. This is a very cheap and efficient way to do this. Um, I got a deal on some pre-sterilized wood sticks, and I've been using those just to make my life easier. I also have found buying plastic disposable hockey sticks for spreading our colonies work better than using glass. We've used glass for years, but we've had some contamination issues. When we went to the black, to the plastic disposable one use, we really had better results as we did it. And so the other thing is I have a whole bench of bottles and tubes and beakers that the students can use. Students decide what they need. I do not really tell students what size beaker they need if they're making running buffer or gel running buffer or whatever, then they need to decide what size bottle they make, need to go get it, 
use it, wash it, and put it back. A few other things that I'd like to show you is when you order the IGM Labs program, these are the kit plates that you get. Each kit plate has 384 wells. Each well has a different plasmid in it, and they're all freeze-dried, and they can be stored at room temperature. Students will have to look up the key and the orientation of what plasmid they need. I then mark a spot that they, what they need it. I puncture the tin foil. I add liquid to it, reconstitute the plasmid. I pull it up. I put it into a microcentrifuge tube that is labeled class stock. I give the students a few microliters of that, and I put the rest back into a special box that I keep in a different lab. That way, when I need it later, I know where to find it. And as you can see, I've been doing this for many years, and I go all the way to 2011 worth of iGen plates. So we have a ton of plates, but really, once you get one set of plates, you can do a lot of work just with that one set. The other thing that I've gone to is a cryobank system. These cryobank systems have these little beads in this material. Students can get bacteria cultures that contain our plasmids, add it to these beads, they shake it up, you pour off the liquid, and now bacteria kind of coat the beads and they can be stored at minus 80 and minus 20 degrees. And so the company says they'll last two years at minus 20 and indefinitely at minus 80 for all intent purposes. And then all you do is pull out a bead, put it onto a plate, shake it around, and you can start your cultures. And so this is a very nice way. I used to store plasmids and then re-transform bacteria cells every year. But by going to this system, I can skip that step and we can move for forward faster than normal. At the end of each lab bench is a little small centrifuge. So once again, students all use their own centrifuge. They all work together at a lab bench. I try to discourage them from going from one bench to another and they have to work with each other. If this centrifugation is going to take five minutes, why don't you stop for a few minutes, wait for your partners across from you to get done, and you can put your plasmas all together and you don't have to wait. So they really have to work together and manage time. And that's really what's going on when you're working in a research lab. And so once again, you can see all our different boxes and materials. I also have a lot of gel rigs that are set up. So these gel rigs, are from Mini One. I really like this system. I really like this company. It's a nice little setup. You pour your gels, you put it on, the power source, everything is built into it. The, the power goes off when you take the lid off. It has these nice little magnets that protect it. Students can turn on the light. They can see their gel images running. You can take pictures using this, but we get much better pictures on our transluminator. But however, when we go into the high school classrooms and we do projects, we take pictures directly off this gel rigs. As you can see, over the years, I've been able to buy six of these, one for each bench. Students can use these as they see fit, and now they're even color marked. So what happens is if a student at one bench needs it, they can only use it from their group. They got to work together. These things run very fast and they work really well. And I just have a whole microwave that we use to heat our gels and, and run our gels and we do these things. There's centrifuge, but students don't really use my centrifuge. Another thing to point out is we have students constantly are communicating with each other. And so if a student's pulling a part that other students may need, they put it on the board, they start recording their information on this board, and 